Hello everyone and welcome to Agile, home to the Persian community. Uh, we're doing an interview today with Leila Shams, who's the founder of the website Learning Persian with Chai and Conversation. She's based in Texas and I'm really honored and excited to speak with her today and to find out how she started this whole project. It's a very nice website, wonderful website, where you can learn Persian uh, via podcasts. So she has these nice snippets, uh, podcasts, about 15 minutes long each, with lessons behind it and some bonus material. So if you have never spoken Persian before, after visiting this website and after taking these units and these lesson, lessons, I can assure you that um, you will speak conventional and conversational, um, simple Persian. Uh, very effective, uh, done in a very professional, effective, and fun way. And we're really excited to talk to her today and find out more about her venture. And as the name says, Chai. It's a little camerang, but still good. Chai and conversation. <laughs> founder of uh, the wonderful Persian website Learn Persian with Chayan Conversation and we have her today she's based in Texas and uh, Leila welcome and thank, thank you, you for coming to the show thank you for having me absolutely uh, first question that I had for you is tell us about the uh, the name how did the name Chayan Conversation come up well um, I've been living in Austin for about 12 years I've moved here from Dallas mm -hmm. um, and I came here for college and actually, when I was going to school here, we had a very active Persian uh, Persian organization, mm -hmm. and they used to have weekly meetings at a coffee shop here in town, and uh, it was called Coffee and Conversation, where everyone would get together and just speak Farsi the whole time, and mm -hmm. so that's where the name came from. I just changed it. I thought, why Coffee and Conversation? Let's just change, change it to Chai and Conversation. By the way, Leila, speaking of Chai, I made Chai here, so as you see, it's a little bit oh. camerang, but I, it's still good, you know. <laughs> enjoying it uh, I, I thought about that I said I have to have my tea when I when, when we have this interview um, how did you grow your fan base when you started this uh, venture well actually I you know the thing about um, Persian programs is that I have been um, developing Persian learning material since I was very little. I grew up in a family that thought language was very important, mm -hmm. and uh, we would all sit together and think of ways to teach Persian mm -hmm. in, in better ways to children. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I started, I, I noticed, or even from the past, I noticed that there's nothing for conversational Persian. Mm -hmm. Everything is very difficult. When you try to get into the, the Persian you know, uh, materials that there are out there, right. they start with trying to teach you how to read and write and... Yep. It's very difficult yeah. um, for someone yeah. who's just trying to learn on their own. Mm -hmm. And so I decided to make the only um, just purely conversational mm -hmm. learning program. Mm -hmm. So when I put it on the internet, I just got a website. Um, I started and I just, you know, in the beginning it was very difficult for me. I, I didn't know how to speak on, on, um, on tape or anything. Right. But as soon as I put it up, people just started to find it. I'm not when you sure. Were doing um, these, the, when you were doing the podcasts, right? When I was doing the podcast, so mm -hmm. people would just find it through iTunes. There was nothing right. else when you typed yep. in Learn Persian yep. in iTunes. Yep. There was nothing else on there. Yep. So people just started to find yep. it, and people started to buy it, and uh, I got a lot of positive feedback. And so I think through word of mouth, um, a lot of different people started to find it. And now we have listeners from all over the world. That's I'm awesome. not sure exactly how they find it because we don't do any advertising still. We don't do any That's awesome. um, promotion but I think just through iTunes and Google searching. That's awesome. I mean, it is a relatively uh, popular language in the U.S., especially in Texas and California and, and, and right. some parts of Canada where there's a lot of uh, um, the Persian communities more condensed. And you would always think that, you know, it's kids who want to learn Persian or, or, or the offspring of Persian parents who live in um, these right. countries who want to learn. But surprisingly, there's so many Americans, Canadians, Europeans, Asians who also want to learn the language for any reason, you know, maybe they're partnered with somebody Definitely. or married to somebody, they just have friends and that's just wonderful, awesome. Definitely. How does uh, social media play a, a role in your, um, in your environment? 
Well, uh, very early on, I started a Facebook page for Chai and Conversation um, just because it was the easiest thing to do. And I, you know, I have a full-time job. Um, mm-hmm. I work in the architecture field. Mm-hmm. And so I really don't have a lot of time to devote to this. It's just after work and whenever I can squeeze in some extra time. Mm-hmm. And so Facebook was the easiest thing for me to, to get into. Um, and, you know, we just advertise it on our page and I talk about it on the podcast and people started to, to like it on Facebook. And, you know, it's always very funny to me. I'll put some question like, what's your favorite Iranian food? And people just love to answer and, yes. and let, let us know their opinions. Or I'll put something like, what are you doing for the weekend? And everyone's eager to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Or even on Friday, I wrote, you know, a little uh, piece about Shazze Kuchulu, which is very important, yeah. you know, The Little yeah. Prince. Yeah, my, um, my favorite book from Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. I, I read it when I was a kid. I read it yes. in Canada in French. And I have I actually have the story, the CD for my kids. I have a two and a four-year-old <laughs> in Farsi. Yeah. They get bored after 10 minutes because it's a, you know, it's a deep voice narrating. But I love it. Yeah. Such a great idea. Yeah, it's a wonderful story. Um, and so I wrote that on there and I said, what language have you read that in? And everyone just loves to talk about, you yeah. know, everyone loves to share their experiences. They love to yeah. feel like they're in a community. Yeah. And so Facebook has played a large ro- role in our community. Yeah. Well, you wrote on the website that uh, you were a child when you left Iran um, yes. and uh, you practically grew up in the U.S. Uh, your entire life. Tell us uh, about the memories, um, the few memories that you have from the motherland and, and what you have retained the most. Well, unfortunately, um, when I was growing up, it was the Iran-Iraq war. Yeah. Um, so one of the, the most vivid memories that I have is of the war and of going, you know, mm-hmm. um, whenever the sirens would go off, we'd have to go immediately into a basement. So I remember that as a child. But, you know, I also remember some good things like the candy store at the end of the street. I would always wander off. Um, I was an only child, so there were a lot of adults around me. But I would try to escape and go to the candy store. And the candy store owner would have to call and and let my family know that I was there. Um, But I did come when I was very small. I was three and a half years old. So um, very small memories. Uh, Is Persian a difficult language to teach? Um, I don't think so. I actually think, first, it's a very beautiful language to listen to, and I think that's very motivating for people. And also, um, there's enough influence from, you know, enough words that are similar enough to English and similar enough to a lot of languages that people are familiar with, like uh, French or Arabic, that I think those are encouraging to people. Whenever you can draw comparisons to languages that people people are, are already familiar with, I think they're more excited and more motivated to learn. So since your student base is not really sitting in front of you in a classroom, the conventional um, type classroom that, you know, you have 10, 12, 15 students and you're the teacher, you're doing these podcasts and you're actually doing these snippets of 15 minute podcasts, whether it's in a studio or in your living room or in front of somebody, um, is it, does it make a difference really if somebody is sitting in front of you and listening to you and trying to learn the language as opposed to just you um, recording these and giving them out on iTunes? Definitely. Well, I think that's what we do in our program that really helps is that I am actually sitting next to Matt, the student. So right. the format of the podcast is that it's me teaching Matt, who has an Iranian wife. Right. Um, and so I'm sitting there in a room with him every single time and we're going over the lessons. And so I have a script that I'm reading that he you know, has to just learn. And so the good thing about that is I have someone who's responding. And if I'm going too fast for him, then he won't understand. Mm-hmm. Or you know, uh, if he mispronounces something, I can correct him. Because otherwise, you're right. It's difficult to, to just do it one-sided and mm-hmm. to guess what other, how other people are responding. I read an article on your website that said, um, you know, it's Persian and not Farsi. And I personally agree with that. But I know that some people yes. might raise um, an argument and say, what do you mean? You know, it's Farsi and we speak Farsi and Persian is um, just a different word for Iranian. And um, some other nationalities might get confused because we have always juggled with all these words as a Persian, as it Iranian, as it Farsi. What, what do you what's your take on that? Oh, man. Well, I feel very strongly about the fact that it's not very important. Uh, a lot of people will just write me emails just to say 
you know, why did you put Farsi in parentheses? Uh, it's usually that way. Most people are upset when I call it Farsi. Um, and to me, I think that enough people recognize the word as Farsi that um, it's, you know, for me, language is about communication. Right. And if you can communicate what you're trying to say with this word or that word, I think let's just not get hung up on those details and, you know, focus on what's important, which is to preserve this language. Absolutely. Um, you spoke about Matt. Um, how did you meet him and how, how is it to work with a non-Iranian um, partner uh, who's a student? Um, and um, tell us about that. Sure. Well, I had this idea for this project for about a year before I started working with Matt. And my, uh, my criteria for a partner in this project was that they had to be extremely reliable. Mm -hmm. They had to be a good actor, have a good voice, be pleasing to listen to, charming. Um, and they had to have a motivation to learn the language. And so these three things were very difficult to find because sometimes you find someone who wants to learn the language, but you just can't count on them to be there all the time. Yeah. Or you find someone who is really interested in working on a project, but they have no reason to learn the Persian language. And so I was working in a um, glass engineering company mm -hmm. and the office manager was Iranian, Laudan. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was just about to get married to um, Matt, who is now her husband, and who they actually just had a baby. Yep. Um, and so he was a very, you know, I liked him from the beginning. We got along very well. Um, he was very motivated. You know, now he's in med school. He was, but, you know, despite being so busy, he's always super reliable and awesome. very enthusiastic about the project. Um, so I was very lucky to meet him. And he's just, he loves his wife and he loves his wife's family and wants to be able to speak with them. So I found a perfect, perfect candidate. That's, aw that's, that's awesome. And speaking of good acting, uh, Leila, uh, I, I watched the video and we're going to show the video uh, in a little bit here. Um, the video of Tarof uh, that you guys made with, with friends and uh, it's just, <laughs> it's hilarious. I mean, being uh, from Persian descent, you understand it so fully, but even if you show it to somebody else who has no clue about what Tarof <laughs> means, um, just going through the different um, scenarios, whether it's entering first uh, in a room or picking up a tab in a restaurant or anything. It's just hilarious. And uh, I think you guys did a great job on, on, on that video. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a really fun video to make. And thankfully, we have a really nice community here who mm -hmm. was willing to <laughs> put some time and, awesome. and work on that project. <laughs> خلاصه نه بفرمایید تو رو اصلا این حرفا نمیشه خودکشی میکنه نه من فرش قرمز رو گذاشتم برای شما فرش قرمز من اصلا واسط میخوام اینجا پیرنمو در بیارم بنزنم شما هم خوشتیپ تری هم جوون تر بزرگتری گفتن بفرمایید حالا با هم دیگه میریم تو نه حالا با هم دیگه میریم تو بفرمایید با هم دیگه بریم تو آها تو اول Tell us about the um, the you have three units uh, for lessons. So unit one, unit two, unit three. Each one has, I believe, what a dozen lessons ten. in it. Ten, ten lessons. Tell us about how they're uh, separated and uh, what level kind of you need in order to reach the next uh, the next episodes. Okay. Well, so the first two units we have four units so far. Um, we're just finishing the fourth unit. It'll be ready in in about two weeks. Okay. Um. So December twentieth is the date when that'll be ready. Mm -hmm. But basically the way the program is set up is it's just set up so that you can start speaking from the very first lesson. Nice. And so um, 
you know, no grammar, nothing, just teaching the basics of the language. Um, because as we say on the program, we say language learning is all about communication. So we just want to give you tools to be able to start speaking from the very first day so that you can go to your in-laws or you can go to your friends and just be able to have a conversation. So exciting when you go through a different lesson, let's say, and you learn new things and somebody like Matt, for example, with, with his wife or with right. his in-laws, you know, if you learn, if you pick up uh, five, six different words or phrases, uh, exactly. you just use those, you know, and you become exactly. better and better. Exactly. And it's just about having confidence to just use yep. the gra use the words, even though you're not going to learn the grammar immediately. Yep. Um, but just if you know those five words, you can have you can do something with them yep. or you can pick them up in conversation as your in-laws are speaking. Yep. Yep. Um, so the first two units are just like that, just throwing you into the language. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Persian is difficult because there's, you know, informal, formal way right. of speaking. Right. And also written Persian is so much different than spoken Persian. And so we don't, cover, you know, we mention it a little bit on the podcast, but I do not get hung up on that. I just say, this is how you say it. This is how you'll hear it. Um, so then those are the first two units, the first 20 lessons, mm -hmm. you know, language you can use in a restaurant with your friends, you know, everything. Is, then in the, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Then in the third unit, we finally get into grammar. Right. There we start to talk about, you know, what's the past tense, what's the present tense, all these things that we've learned so far, you know, where are they coming from, uh, what do they mean? And so that's the third unit. So somebody, um, who, who, somebody who comes along with you to the third unit necessarily uh, saw uh, the first unit, obviously, and the second unit because yes. it's really hard to jump into the third unit unless you're a, a, a good speaker already and you just want to pick up some words. But Definitely, definitely. I would say that for a beginner, you have to start from lesson one and go through. All the if way. you know the language already, uh -huh. then you can begin in unit three, mm -hmm. and then you can start to start to build your grammar skills. Right. Leila, in this type of business, is podcasting the way to go? Oh, yeah, I think that definitely podcasting is a good good way to do it because for me personally, you know, I have a you know job and I sit there at my desk all the time I work. Right. Uh, I can't watch YouTube videos. I can't, right. you know, read something. Right. But I can definitely listen as I'm, I'm there. Or people that go to the gym or people mm -hmm. that are in the car, mm -hmm. they can't uh, be expected to visually be looking at something all right. the time, but they can easily listen. Mm -hmm. And so with language learning, it's all about repetition, hearing it over and over again. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, that this is the best format for language learning, podcasting. I have a question about kids, and uh, I, I um, probably personally know the answer to this one, at least to my own expectations. But do kids in the U.S. or anywhere in English-speaking countries outside of Iran, do these kids pick up uh, Farsi or Persian easily or not? I definitely think you need to answer this. I don't have any kids. I will. I, will. I just want to know your, your take on that. So. I think that, I mean, the, the way that I retain the language is that I grew up in a house with my grandparents. And, mm -hmm. you know, my grandmother, my grandfather was an English literature major. He could have easily spoken with me in, in Farsi, but my grandmother was not, you know, she couldn't speak. And so I had to speak with her. But also my family really had pride in speaking Persian anywhere that we went. Uh -huh. um, and if we were in the store, you know, I was very proud of, of speaking a language that not everyone could understand. Uh -huh. And so I personally, even with my little cousins, I'm sure that I drive them crazy, but I have a very strict Persian only policy. Um, I think that the more you, you hold to that rule, you know, in the house only Persian, because they pick up English outside, uh -huh. you know, they have plenty of opportunity to speak that language. Right. Um, I think that if there's a strict policy in the house, then yeah, kids have an innate uh, love of languages and mm -hmm. they have an innate mm -hmm. love of um, learning. Right. So I hope I, you don't feel yeah. bad that we're speaking English here, but it's just for the for the program. But obviously, yes. you know, uh, if we meet informally, we can always speak Persian. Let me answer yes. you that same question with, with uh, my own experience. I have a two and a four year old, a four and a yes. half year old, two girls. Um, and obviously my wife is uh, from Persian descent also from Kerman and she grew up in the US so we both speak Farsi Persian together all the time when the kids came um, same thing sense of pride uh, they have to speak Persian they have to learn the language uh, picking up the first words where Baba Mama Chetori Salam all of that happened and then they went to daycare and uh, they went to full-time daycare uh, in English, obviously, and it, it, it does uh, make a huge difference because they make friends, they love their teachers, they bond, 
they come home and they speak English and they pick up English much faster, even though they fully understand Persian. I mean, I speak to Ava and Lily, my girls in Farsi all the time. Maybe not all the time, maybe 90% of the time. And they know exactly what I'm talking about. They get me what I'm, what I ask them. They, if I tell them, go clean your room, they go, clean. no, not always, but they, they, they try. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is, um, you know, a, a better way, I think, uh, to, to make them understand the language is, is with signs and with uh, pictures and I have these cards here that I wanted to show you that uh, her grandma brought from Iran so oh, nice. you know these are um, I think she bought them in a bookstore and uh, Adam Barfi and you know yes. Hune, Khane. I mean obviously they're not going to learn the alphabet right away but they associate the word with the image so this is Kola and if yes. I tell her honey what is this and she says this is Kola she might not be able to write it but at least she knows it's Kola. So this, we, I have a bunch of these. I have about, uh, you know, uh, 60, That's 70 great. cards like that. They probably don't know all of it. But uh, I think this is a good way for children to learn. And I think you have that same method. Um, That's good. So then do they speak uh, English to you? Or do they speak? They speak English back. I mean, they, they know a few words. The little one, um, her her Farsi is better. I mean, she's, she's uh, you could tell. She's only two. But you could tell that her Persian is going to be stronger than Ava, the four, four and a half year old. Uh, okay. But that's just um, personally. I mean, uh, it might yeah. be the opposite when they grow up. But right. uh, I cannot expect them to be fully, you know, Persian speaking, perfect, uh, yeah. no accent, no dialect. You know, when they're, they're going to write the alphabet. And, and some people say when you go to Iran and they visit the family there, grandma, grandpa, and, you know, when they're there right. for a month and a half surrounded by nothing but Iranians, it's going to make a difference. We'll see. You know, they're going to go in the That's the hardest screen. question, and I yeah. hope that you explore this with a lot of different people because I know everyone, uh, you know, my age whose mm -hmm. parents let them speak English or, you know, lost their language are so mm -hmm. mad at their parents, but I don't know how you, you know, even in my family, you know, my little cousins don't speak Persian back yeah. to their parents. It's yeah. just so hard to... Yeah. It, that is the, the question um, <laughs> that I'm very curious to know the answer to. Absolutely. What's the next endeavor for you guys, Leila? Um, well, we are uh, just updating the website. So up to this point, it's just been word of mouth. And I like to think of it as a trying conversation beta version, basically. Right. Um, and so I've been you know, getting feedback from all the listeners of what they want um, for the program to improve, to better fit their needs. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of new things in, in the works for trying conversation, both for these past 40 lessons and for the you know 40 lessons to come. Um, I'm planning to have 80 lessons, so it's a complete package of, uh, of lessons so that you can really speak well by the end. Um, also, more videos are coming. You know, we just have that one video. Yep. It just takes a lot of time <laughs> yep. to do. And so we're, uh, Nazani Shirazi, who is the filmmaker for those videos, is uh, has been living in New York and she's moving to Austin in a couple of months. So hopefully there will be a lot more videos to come as well. Awesome. Uh, coming back to the kids, I saw this on your website just yesterday and I added this question uh, to my list. Wonderful idea. The Alpha Board game that you guys developed. Yes. Uh, yes. That's a great idea. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. Well, I can actually send you a copy. I was thinking of that as you were showing the cards. Um, yeah. We have also a lot of cards in there. I think 120 cards of words. Yep. Um, but basically, I started that with my family. It wasn't my idea. It was their fam their idea. Since I have an architecture background, I, yeah. I did the graphics for the game. <coughs> um, and my aunt is a psychologist, a child psychologist. So she came up with, you know, an idea for col the colors and all those things. And then my mom, she has always been working with kids for language learning. And my other aunt is also very good. So everyone, you know, brought something to the table. And we sat down together and we tried to make a game that was really fun um, for kids to learn. And so we did that project about five years ago um, and, you know, had advertisements on TV and got a lot of good reception. Um, and so, you know, we, we hope to make another game sometime as well. This is awesome. I mean, I can't wait until the kids are a little bit older and uh, yeah. hopefully they can actually associate themselves with with the words, with the letters, hopefully. Yes. Uh, and we can just have some good quality uh, family time. Four is a good time to start. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'll definitely look into that. Um, have you uh, heard about uh, our um, parent company, you know, uh, produces the show Sam and Som? Um, and uh, have you heard about that? Have you seen the shows? And what, what are your thoughts about Sam and Sam? 
I have, well, you introduced me to it um, when you first wrote me, and right. so I watched them then, and also uh, this weekend I was in Dallas with my family, and we, we sat down and watched uh, all the episodes last night, and we had a good time. Awesome. Actually, it was really good for, um, you know, I think it's good for children, but also my grandmother really enjoyed it because she's still, you know, working on her English, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so she really enjoyed it as well, mm -hmm. um, listening to the different translations. Yep. And the idea, again, the idea just arose with my own children. We speak to them in Farsi, they answer in English. So this, this, is, this, this is where the idea originates from. And yeah. we're, we're very happy that, um, you know, um, we've, getting, we've been getting some positive feedback from you. Yeah, it's a wonderful program. program. Thank you. Uh, what is your ideal goal for Chai and Conversation? What, what, what plateau do you want to reach? Well, I wanted to, you know, <laughs> we get a lot of... Uh, people writing and saying, you know, they've tried Rosetta Stone, they've tried Pimsleur, and this is what works. Mm -hmm. And so that's that has been my goal from the beginning, is to make the best program, um, again, with a design focus and also with the focus of just conversational Persian. I mean, it, it baffles me. Like you said, Persian is such a popular language, it baffles me that no one's done this up to this point. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even those programs, when I listen to it, it's just so confusing to try to figure out what you can say in a room and what you have to read and write. Um, so my goal is to, you know, have the best language learning program for conversational Persian. You mentioned also about uh, your background in architecture. Tell us a little bit more about your education, your background, and, um, you know, what you do. Yeah, um, I studied here in uh, Austin. Um, I studied architecture, a five-year program, and um, since then I've been working in the field. I really like it, um, and you know that's what I love to do during the day. Right. Um, but I also love, you know, uh, journalism and podcasting, mm -hmm. and I have so many interests, and so I'm able to thankfully explore those on my on my time off. Well, Leila, it has been a, a wonderful experience talking to you today. We're so proud of you and of your, your initiative and just the fact that you were just a child when you left Iran, but yet you are so Persian. Um, you remained uh, very close to your roots and uh, you have gathered a, a wonderful fan base um, teaching yeah. the language, the, the mother language that you, know, you and I both learned as a child and uh, everybody thought we're going to forget it because we just grew up in a different country but no it has I mean thanks to your initiative and, and to your website and blog and podcasts and lessons and fan base I mean it's just growing uh, day by day and we really wish you the best of luck and success and all the endeavors uh, in, in the future that you're taking have fun with the videos we love the videos we really Thank do you. I mean I hope we're going to see more and more of them um, I hope so like too. Tomorrow. And same to you. Congratulations to you on your on your project. And I look forward to seeing more of Sam and Sam. Thank you. Thank you. What are your any closing thoughts before we uh, before we say goodbye? Well, um, I think that if there's anybody you want to thank, maybe uh, if Matt, I wish Matt was here so we can I speak know. to him too. But say definitely say hi to him. Hi Matt, and congrats for the baby and yeah, good luck in med school. <laughs> All the best. To, he's having a good time with the baby and he has a little bit of time off, so it's good. Absolutely. It's, so yeah, of course, I want to thank Matt and um, we also have a new partner, um, Chadwick Wood, and he's mm -hmm. going to be helping us with the website and all the details that go into, into doing the project. So, and of course, you know, thank you to my family for, <laughs> for instilling this love of the language. Awesome. Well, Leila, I really hope that you keep in touch with Ajil and with us and with Sam and Sam and, you know, that we, we form a tighter network and we really need to be more united in the Persian yes. community, whether it's in Texas, whether it's in California, whether it's in Canada, or even a remote place in Europe where you don't have many Persians. I mean, we really have to, with the help of the Internet, yes. with the help of Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and everything that's out there, uh, be more united and again you have done a wonderful job uh, doing that we thank you very much for being part of us and part of our thank show you. today thank you for having me absolutely take care now <laughs>